Hello there! Welcome to the official walkthrough video for Adaptive Runs, Project Sam's latest contact library in the Colors series. My name is Martin, creative director here at Sam, currently working from home, as most of you. And in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to show you the ins and outs of this new and exciting release. Adaptive Runs is named after the engine that powers it, Adaptive Sync. We originally developed this engine for Symphobia for Pandora, which came out last year. So what does Adaptive Sync do? It synchronizes samples that have a certain musical buildup to your track. Think of crescendos, percussion rolls, string rises, and well, runs. What these types of samples have in common is that traditionally they are rather inflexible. You have to nudge them around so that the end of the sample is in the right spot, keep checking, but then the start might not be where you want it any longer. I think we've all been here adding cymbal rolls or harp glissandi to our mockups. Well, Adaptive Sync does this matching up for you, and that's a major time saver. Those who use Pandora will know. It's also built on a vast set of recordings, which makes it sound extremely realistic. So, in that little intro piece, I used four tracks with different instruments from Adaptive Runs. Let me solo these four tracks and enable the click track so that you can hear more clearly what's going on. Now, before I go through the library, I'd like to show you the magic of the Adaptive Sync engine by changing the tempo. Let's drop from 125 to 110 BPM and see what happens. All the runs were adjusted automatically and they still sound great. Let's go down even further to 95 BPM. Yep, still sounds good. So this is the engine at work in Adaptive Runs. And if you look closer, you can see that I've also used two Adaptive Sync instruments from Symphobia for Pandora. A timpani roll here and a harp glissando here. So these two tracks synchronize to my tempo as well. So enough introduction. Let's load up Adaptive Runs and check out the library. Let's first take a look at what was recorded. We covered runs for a number of orchestral sections. High strings, low strings, high winds and low winds, a separate piccolo flute and trumpets. For all of these sections, we sampled major and minor scale runs upward and downward. The full range strings and the full range winds have the most extensive set of runs from a fourth interval to a whopping four octaves spanning multiple sections. Everything was recorded in the same beautiful concert hall as most of our other libraries, including the Symphobia series. And this also means it's a great addition to those libraries. Right now, we're looking at one of the combo instruments, which means multiple orchestral sections are available within the same contact interface. In this case, full strings and winds. The interface is divided into five distinct parts. The controls for adaptive sync, the controls for the available orchestral sections, the four recorded microphone sets plus a nice pre-rendered mix mic, the control mapping of the scale and the direction of the run, and the attack release envelope and effects. I will be jumping between these different parts as I show you the library. All right, I've prepared the little background arrangement. It's a super simple set of the same repeating orchestral hit. Now, let's open Adaptive Runs and begin by selecting the downbeat mode. In this mode, the library will make sure that it always hits the next downbeat regardless of when I start a note, like this. So as you could hear, the further away I was from the next bar, the longer the selected run was. And the closer I was to the next bar, the shorter the selected run. That's very useful. 
And what's important here is that it's not just stretching the same sample. For this instrument, it has nine different lengths to choose from. Okay, under control, you can see that I currently have velocity selected for switching between major and minor, and the mod wheel, CC1, for switching between up and down. Let me play a few more notes and vary these two controllers a bit. If you want to map these differently, you can by clicking the cork wheel icon here. You can choose between key switches, CC or velocity for both the run scale and direction. Let me show you a few more useful controls. Under sections, I can set the gain for the strings and woodwinds individually. Let's make the strings a bit softer and the winds a bit louder. I can also quickly add an extra octave to each of these sections. Let's do this for the winds. Nice. Also, I can quickly mute and unmute by clicking the label. And by shift clicking, I can unload a section from RAM. If I do this now, you can see that the RAM use drops by half. And while we're at it, I can do the same for the microphones as well as the scales and directions. So say I know that I only need major upward runs, I can quickly unload all minor and downward runs like this. And again, this can make quite the difference on a low RAM system. Now, obviously, you don't always want to automatically sync to the downbeat. Let's look at the other adaptive sync modes available. And let's use a different instrument for that, the high strings and high winds combo, which features the piccolo as a separate section. We're now in beats mode. Here you can set a fixed number of beats for your run. That means it's tempo based. If I now change the tempo drastically, you will see that I can still use the same beat slider, but the runs will have adjusted accordingly. A cool feature in adaptive runs is the bounce mode. When bounce mode is available, I can have the run bounce up and down automatically as long as I hold down the sustain pedal. In seconds mode, you can select a fixed length that is not bound to your project's tempo. You select a fixed number of milliseconds, like this. And then for low RAM situations, there's also the option to turn off adaptive sync entirely. You can now select the available runs manually with the slider and they will stream from disk instead, which means a significantly lower RAM load. Before I move on to some of the other features of adaptive runs, I want to show you the range toggle down here. You can use this toggle to nudge the selected run to a wider or narrower arrangement. In the default position, adaptive runs will always pick the sample that is closest to the length that you need, because this will give you the best sound quality. But say instead of this one octave run, you wanted to pick the fourth interval run sample instead, while still fitting into the selected one beat. You can force this by sliding the toggle left. If you wanted to pick the two octave run instead, so a wider arrangement, you can force this by sliding right. As you can see, the dot turn red, which means that the engine will have to use a significant amount of time stretching to make this work. You can also hear this, uh, we're pushing realism a bit now. But the engine does do what it's supposed to do and fits the sample into the selected number of beats. The default position will always sound best, but this toggle does give you some useful freedom over the arrangement the engine picks. Good. 
I'm going to switch to a different instrument, the oboes, clarinets and bassoons playing together. And let's take a look at the different microphones the library offers. By default, when you load an instrument, the mix mic is the only mic that's loaded into memory. And this is a nice, lush, pre-rendered mix of the four individual stereo mics. Let's listen to those individual mics one by one. This is the close mic, closest to the players. The stage mic, close to the conductor's spot. The far mic, behind the conductor in the audience. And this is the wide mic, which is a stereo pair placed very far apart at the edges of the concert stage. I now loaded all four mics into RAM when I clicked and enabled them. Uh, the closed stage and far mics are currently muted, not unloaded. But as I mentioned before, you can unload them again by shift clicking like this. And you can, of course, also load and enable multiple mics and create your own mix. Let's have the close mic on with a little bit of wide mic mixed in. Nice. You can also assign a different contact output to each mic individually. But keep in mind that you will bypass these real-time effects over here if you select an output other than main. Cool, I'd like to show you a few more things. Let me load up the trumpet runs for that. For the trumpets, uh, we also sampled chromatic runs. So let's pick those. Let's take a look at some of the more advanced settings. After I press my first note, a little freeze icon appears here in the adaptive sync section. This is the freeze sync feature. If I enable it, it will unload all run samples from memory, except for the length that was needed for that note I just played. And this is another way to save a significant amount of RAM for situations where you know you'll just be needing, in this case, two beat runs. Uh, if I click the icon again, the other lengths are loaded back into RAM and the sync controls are available again. The cockwheel icon here will open up the more advanced sync settings. For example, you can offset or nudge the point that the run syncs to, to the left or the right. You can also choose if you want the runs to play until the very end of the sample after the sync point, even if you release your note, or if you wanted to strictly follow the release envelope that I have set here at all times. Uh, the first of the two options is the default, as this makes sure the natural concert hall tail rings out fully. Let's also look at the help features in adaptive runs. For each control or button that I touch, a short description pops up here in the info bar. But on top of that, adaptive runs also has a more extensive on-screen help by clicking the help icon here. I now get more elaborate descriptions for each of the different parts of the interface. Last but not least, I'd like to note that Adaptive Runs, of course, has full NKS support. That's the native control standard from Native Instruments. This means that you can conveniently control the most important features right from your complete control keyboard. I can change the number of beats, number of seconds, the mic gains, the section gains, and more. Also, it's worth noting that you can automate these controls right from your host as well. And that concludes my walkthrough of Adaptive Runs, the third and latest release in Project Sam's Color series. I hope you found it worth watching. If you go and get Adaptive Runs, thank you and enjoy. And until next time, bye bye.